So what happens when the customer tells you no? I mean, let's be honest here, right? The biggest problem that people have in sales is getting rejected. Matter of fact, no one likes rejection. However, we get rejected more times than we get told yes. In theory, we should be used to being told no. That's not always the case. The average sales professional gets told no 12 times before their next sale says yes, right? Now, that may be different for your industry. That may be different for your sales cycle. That may be different for your sales skill set. However, the point is, people are going to say no more than they say yes. So how do we fix that? How do we convince someone who says no to say yes? Well, you see, I personally believe there is no convincing, right? You can't convince somebody who's not open to being convinced. And how do you identify that? Well, it's really simple. Once a rep calls me and says, hey, my customer said no to this, or they're, they told me this, so therefore they're not going to use my product. They're not going to buy my service. And what we hear as sales professionals, we hear every objection that our potential customer tells us. Your product's too expensive. I like my competitors. Um, I have a relationship with my competitor. Um, their product is better. Whatever the objection is. And typically, a sales professional hears everything that the customer says. The best sales professionals hear everything the customer didn't say. You see, when you're having a conversation and you're engaged in a dialogue, to handle an objection, you typically have to hear two sides. You have to hear what the customer is telling you, and you have to hear what the customer isn't telling you. Because typically they are going to leave clues on what's important to them. What are their hot buttons? What are the issues that they're facing that is going to cause them to switch or change their mind? Two ways to hear it. One, what they're telling you, everybody will tell you that. Any sales professional, any sales coach will say, hey, here's how you handle objections. You listen to their objection, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we can do a whole other blog post on handling objections. The best sales professionals not only hear the objections, they hear what wasn't said. And typically, when you start to hear what's not being said, you start to direct your conversation to extract that information. But you don't extract it in a cheesy manner. Hey, here's good probing questions. You have to ask a lot of good questions. I remember one of my early sales careers, I was told, hey, here's the questions you have to ask. Well, that was a great guideline. But that guideline made me sound like every other sales professional. That guideline made me sound like I was the new kid in the sales environment. And I didn't want to sound like that. So what I did was I said, okay, if these are the questions that are going to help probe my prospect to give me the information I need to help educate them to decide whether my product is a great fit or not, I need to take these questions and go lateral. I need to go deep. So the questions that I'm going to ask you are going to go a couple steps lateral, a couple steps deep, and those questions are typically determined by the information that my prospect's not voluntarily giving me. That there, that sole approach in your next sales call is going to be the difference from moving the needle and driving and getting revenue or being told no for the hundredth time. What are people not telling you? Is your prospect not saying, hey, man, I don't have an objection. I have a condition. Your competitor is best friends with my spouse. That's a condition. You have to extract that information. Is your prospect telling you, hey, with all honesty, before you started working for this company, I had a bad experience and here's why. Is your prospect not telling you that they don't like you? That is the information that you have to be able to extract. And when you leave your sales call, understand this. You're not going to extract all the information on one call. The higher value products, the higher ticket items are never sold on one call. Now, I don't want to say never because there's a possibility someone's watching this saying, hey, I've done this. But 
in the 18 years I've been working in sales and some of the biggest deals that I've negotiated, closed, or worked with people who've closed, it is a multiple call system. It is a multi-touch program. The reason it is is because we have to have all these conversations lead to one cohesive presentation of our services, presentation of our offer, and we have to extract information from what's being said, the reasons we're being told no, and what we haven't heard yet, and why haven't we heard it yet. You see, that part of sales, that is advanced level thinking. Hey, I heard you tell me my price is too expensive. What I didn't hear you tell me was expensive to what? Expensive to who? Expensive because. Those are all different reasons that the customer or your prospect hasn't shared with you yet. So you get really good and you get skilled at listening to the objections that are spoken and listening to the objections that are not spoken. You compile a list, you compile your best offer and you're coming and you're ready to present your offer to your prospect. How do you prevent that prospect from telling you no again? Well, that is something you definitely need to work with your sales manager on or work with a sales coach on. Because typically in your industry and whatever the industry is, you can make a list of the top 10, 20 objections you're gonna hear and you can role play being the prospect and you can go lateral, you can go deep and you can identify the questions that are going to come up in your sales process. By simply knowing what your customer is going to say what they didn't say and why they didn't say it, you'll put yourself in a better position to drive revenue on your next sales call. That's what I got for you guys today. My name is Anthony Garcia. Do me a favor, subscribe to the blog. I'll catch you on the next one.